The essential question that the Spectrum Collaboration Challenge is asking is this. Can artificial intelligence usher in a new era in how we use the spectrum? Can we create a new paradigm for spectrum management, one that's no longer static, but driven by a new breed of autonomous, dynamic, and collaborative radio systems? Spectrum sharing tools that increase spectrum access, efficiency, and effectiveness. For the last 100 years, we've taken the exact same approach to managing the spectrum. And today, it's time for a change. I want to welcome everybody to the Spectrum Collaboration Challenge's second preliminary event, what we call PE2. Preliminary event number two was, was our second qualifying event, gearing up for our finale this October in Mobile World Congress, Los Angeles. We had an audience that included, uh, obviously, the teams, the competitors themselves, but, but also included our stakeholders council. These are really in influential and important people throughout the community that have a stake in how these technologies will move forward. We also had a number of, of VIPs throughout the Department of Defense, as well as parts of commercial industry that are very interested in how SC2 technology will influence the future of how they use Spectrum. Only 15 teams actually qualified for today. And there were a lot more teams that, that came before this. The teams themselves, they come from a diverse range of backgrounds, uh, really ranging from digital signal processing, software-defined radio, and, and AI and machine learning. About 50% of them were academic, and the other 50% are mixes of, of individuals as well as commercial research and development uh, institutes. Today we're gonna meet the 15 teams who qualified for the tournament and have spent the last 12 months since preliminary event number one developing and testing their collaborative intelligent radio technologies. The teams that are here today have put in a significant amount of time and again, they've built these radio systems that are interacting and operating in the spectrum in ways that we've never seen before. You have to know software, you have to know radio, you have to know signal processing, you have to know artificial intelligence, uh, open source frameworks, it, it, there's, there's just this vastness of required expertise to even have qualified to be here today. Preliminary event two is, was actually more than 400 matches. We, we took five days to test our competitors in every scenario in, in lots of different combinations with each other. We then took all of that data and, and brought it to a, a live event. The first two rounds are each composed of three scenarios. Each one represents a different set of real world wireless communication challenges. Preliminary event two was actually a, a three round tournament. You know, the first round and the second round were both elimination rounds, taking us from our 15 teams down to 12 teams, down to eight teams. And in each of those rounds, we posed three scenarios that are meant to replicate um, challenging situations for radios in, in real life. For each of the six scenarios that we're gonna look at, we sort of cherry picked uh, matches where the ensemble is doing something interesting. Either good or, or bad. bad. As we were going through the matches and I was highlighting uh, you know, good and bad things that were happening. You, you could see the team sort of pointing up at the screen and saying, oh, you know, postulating what they think that their radios were doing that was good or bad, or you know, maybe changes they should be making for next year. On the left side, you are seeing transmissions that have already happened, right? So this is power that was observed in the spectrum. On the right side, these are messages that the teams are telling each other. Messages shared between teams that, that share their forecasts of what they plan to do next. You can see the teams accurately communicating their needs in the spectrum, right? So you see red transmitting here and saying they want to use it, right? And you see the same with blue. Yeah, so it's stable and what they forecast and what they're asking of each other is very accurate to what they're actually doing. Our payline round is actually a special round of the competition. It's really designed to test the teams against today's status quo. We start by comparing an ensemble of five radio networks, five teams. We evaluate how well they do with today's sort of human um, static allocation uh, approach to using the spectrum. And then we evaluate that exact same set of teams and we challenge them to do better when they rely on autonomy. The teams that do this will be earning $750,000 in prize money to help drive the development of their final solution. Whoa. 
you know, it really turned into a spectator sport at that point. There was cheering, there was hands in faces, there, were, there was clutching of chests, and, and there was a lot of anxiety about whether these teams could do it. And we actually showed that six of our eight finalists were able to demonstrate improving over today's status quo. Year after year, we have this secret hope that we fall out of the competition because uh, December we are very excited and happy when the check arrives in the mail, but, but, but in January reality hit hard and it is another year. Of it's great to be in the top tier, advancing to phase three. We you know, put a, a ton of hard work into this, lots of long hours, and we recognize all the great work the other teams did as well. Uh, it's great to be part of the community, pushing the, the technology forward. That's what really matters. Well, for now, winning the prize, uh, we will definitely continue in the last phase. So it's not the time now to give up because we still have some features we didn't exploit. So. Coming in fourth place this year means that we are in striking distance of top three. So uh, we think we have a couple enabling technologies that will push us over the top. Well, hopefully this prize just means that we can uh, keep working on this for the next round. Our goal is to be uh, number one or competitive for number one. This year we got better uh, performance. So I think um, for next year we for sure will uh, target for uh, the first prize. It's anybody's to take, but uh, we feel really good about our chances. <laughs> uh, we are very optimistic. Actually, what the teams were able to build, I thought, was incredible, right? I mean, we saw radio networks that had been designed to complete isolation from each other, and they had emergent sharing behavior in real time. And when you get in that competition mode, right, you don't get to say, well, that's someone else's job. You need to actually do the complete system. Radio networks autonomously sharing plans collaboratively and determining sort of dynamic divisions of the spectrum resources based on the demand we were giving them, right? These were not static allocations, but ones that were derived on the fly by these systems autonomously. Without that collaboration aspect, without a radio network uh, caring about the success of the other radio networks around it, it just doesn't work. Preliminary event two really elevated the level of difficulty of this competition moving from year one to year two. And as we move from year two into our final year, into our championship, we're gonna elevate that difficulty yet again and see if our competitors can rise to the occasion.